This is my 10th video in my AP Biology review series, and it is about genetics. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who lived from 1822 to 1884, and he's known as the father of modern genetics. He grew pea plants to better understand inheritance. Why pea plants? Why was that such a good choice? Well, they exist in many varieties. Trade examples include flower color, which could be white or purple, pea shape, wrinkled or round, pea color, green or yellow, and more, and we'll be talking about them throughout the video. Mendel tracked traits that could be either this or that, and not a range of possibilities. For example, flowers are either white or purple. They can't be anything in between. And this was really important for him to discover all the traits, sorry, all the patterns of inheritance that he did. He could also control which plants mated with which because pea plants naturally self-fertilize. He discovered that characteristics are inherited through discrete units. We now know the, that those are genes, but keep in mind, mind he lived a while ago, and at the time they didn't know about DNA and genes. If plants self-pollinate, all offspring are of the same variety as the parents, and those plants are called true bred. Hybridization is the mating of two true breeding parents. The true breeding parents are called the P generation. The hybrid offspring are called the F1 generation. The F1 generation will self-pollinate and the F2 generation is produced. And F stands for filial. Filial is basically the children of the P generation. This is an example of an experiment that Mendel did. He started with the P generation, which was two true bred plants. Um, one had violet flowers, one had white flowers, and he mated them together and produced the F1 generation in which all of them were hybrids and they all had violet flowers. But after the F1 generation was allowed to self-pollinate, the F2 generation actually had about a quarter of them that had white flowers. So that's a pretty cool pattern and we'll be talking about it later in the video. Alleles are versions of a gene. For each trait, an organism inherits one allele from each parent. So in this example, this is um, chromosomes in pea plants. As you can see, there's one chromosome from each parent. And the alleles are tall, wrinkled, and smooth. This individual doesn't have a short allele. The dominant allele determines the organism's appearance, and the recessive allele will have no effect on appearance. So in this case, the pea plant is tall, and it is it has smooth peas, because smooth is dominant to wrinkled. And locus means the location of the gene on the chromosome. The law of segregation is that for two alleles for a trait will separate during the formation of gametes during meiosis and will end up in two different gametes. So let's use that um, round trait. Let's say the parent cell is heterozygous for round peas. The gametes will have one that's dominant and one that's recessive. So that's why there's a 50-50 trans that the offspring will inherit a recessive or dominant allele from this parent. Punnett squares help us predict the alleles of offspring by looking at those of the parents. The dominant allele is uppercase, the recessive allele is lowercase. Homozygous is when an organism has the same alleles for the gene. For example, in this case we're going to be looking at the um, length of the pea plants so the dominant um, will be tall, so the two in the beginning are um, homozygous dominant and then homozygous recessive, or the lowercase letters. Heterozygous is when an, in an organism has two different alleles for a gene, so a dominant and a recessive allele. This is a Punnett square. We have... Um, two 
parent plants that are both hi uh, hybrids, but keep in mind they will have the tall phenotype because that is dominant. And then when they're crossed with each other, this is the predicted um, ratio of genotypes and phenotypes. We will have three talls to one short, theoretically. And as you can see, this is why in the previous slide there were a quarter of the plants that had white flowers because the parents of the F2 generation were hybrids and had this pattern as well. Genotype versus phenotype. Genotype is an organism's genetic makeup. In this case, we will be looking at um, P color. Yellow is dominant to green. Phenotype is an organism's appearance. Two organisms may have the same phenotype, but a different genotype. For example, heterozygous individual and a homozygous dominant um, individual for plant color are both, sorry, for pea color are both going to be yellow because yellow is dominant. Here's another Punnett square. In this case, we have a homozygous recessive and a heterozygous. Test crosses is breeding a recessive homozy hom homozygote sorry, with an organism with a dominant phenotype in order to determine the genotype that is unknown. We don't know if it's homozygous dominant or heterozygous because keep in mind those two will have the same phenotype. Let's do an example. Um, a short individual with an individual that we're trying to figure out. We know that it has at least one um, dominant allele because it is tall, but we don't know what that second allele is. So if the unknown genotype is heterozygous, then we should be expecting this pattern in the offspring of the two um, mating. We should have about half and half tall and short plants. If the unknown genotype is homozygous dominant, then all the offspring should be tall. And looking at the offspring of this cross will let us know what the genotype of the unknown plant is. Monohybrids are the progeny produced in the first filial generation by crossing two true breeding parents. Heterozygous for one character, for example, height. A cross between heterozygous are, is called a monohybrid cross. Dihybrids, you might have guessed, is when a plant or an individual, doesn't have to be a plant, is heterozygous for both characters, in this case, P, color, and um, height. You might be wondering, are the two traits inherited together? Well, we will be doing a dihybrid cross to see if that's true, which is a cross between dihybrids. And by doing this cross, Mendel discovered the law of independent assortment, which is that each pair of alleles segregates independently of other pairs of alleles during the formation of gametes. So this kind of ties into the law of segregation we talked about earlier. They're all independent of each other. The traits are inherited independently of one another. And we'll look at an example. This is a dihybrid cross, something similar to what Mendel might have done. This is theoretically what will happen um, if we cross these two individuals. Again, the law of independent assortment is that they're not inherited together, so we will have a one-fourth chance of all of those um, gamete combinations you see there at the top and on the side for the sperm and eggs. And let's add in the phenotypes. The predicted phenotypic ratio using the Punnett square is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And the experimental phenotypic ratio is about the same thing. So that shows that, yes, it's true. These two traits are not inherited together. They're actually inherited independently of one another. Let's do a problem with Mendelian genetics. Let's do the same cross but we're looking for the probability of an offspring with the genotype 
capital Y, lowercase y, so that's heterozygous for um, plant color, and, sorry, pea color, and that is homozygous dominant, so it's round. Well, because of the law of independent assortment, we can look at each um, set of alleles separately. First, let's look at the color. These are the possibilities for the plant color. And we're looking for heterozygous. So as you can see, that's a one-fourth chance. And now, separately, because they're independent, we can look at the P shape. And as you can see, there's a one-fourth chance of having that homozygous dominant genotype. So we can multiply the two together to get a one-eighth chance of the, of the genotype we were looking for. And keep in mind, we can do this because we're finding the probability of several independent events. And in order to do that, we are allowed to multiply their probabilities together. Pedigrees are charts showing a family's history for a specific trait. There are recessively inherited disorders, which means the individual must be homozygous recessive to have the disorder, which means they got one recessive allele from each parent. Heterozygous individuals are carriers, which means they could pass the recessive allele on to offspring. An example of a sickle cell an example of a recessively inherited disorder is sickle cell anemia, which leads to mishappen red blood cells, which can clog blood vessels. This is um, caused by a point mutation, but unfortunately has some pretty severe effects. Dominantly inherited disorders, um, heterozygotes as well as homozygous dominant individuals are affected. And Punnett squares can be done to predict the possible alleles of the offspring. So the, these recessive and dominantly inherited disorders are autosomal disorders, which means they affect chromosomes 1 through 22. We will be talking about sex-linked disorders in the next video. So if we look at this pedigree, this chart can tell us quite a few things, which I think is pretty cool. First of all, we want to make sure we know that the squares are the males, the circles are the females, and then the colors indicate whether they're affected or not. Wild type just means normal. And by looking at this, we can tell what type of disorder this is. We know that it must be a dominantly, an autosomal dominant um, disorder because every generation has affected individuals. And something more that we could find out would be the genotypes of a lot of these individuals. Because if we look at that first generation, we can see that those um, there's an affected male and an unaffected female, and they have um, four kids, half of which are affected, half of which are not. So we know that the father must be um, heterozygous, right? Because not all the kids are affected. So that's just one of the things that we could figure out from looking at this chart. There's many more we could do, but um, you can pause the video and try to figure out more of their genotypes if you would like. Many inheritance patterns are more complex than those predicted by Mendelian genetics, even though he did figure out a lot. There is something called codominance, where both alleles, not just the dominant one, affect the phenotype of the organism. Here's an example. You can see white petals and pink petals. It's not one or the other. Incomplete dominance is where heterozygotes have a different phenotype than the homozygotes. In Mendelian inheritance, heterozygotes have the phenotype of the dominant allele. So this happens in flowers. As you can see, the heterozygous individuals have pink petals, the homozygous dominant have red, and the homozygous recessive have white. Multiple alleles exist for most genes, not just two. So, for example, blood group in humans, there's um, A-type blood, B-type blood, AB, um, and O. 
there's a there's also something called epistasis which is where one gene at one location affects the phenotypic expression of the gene at another location i think this is pretty cool if you look at the picture you can see that this shows the color of mice hair so there's alleles that control if the mice has black um, hair or brown hair but there's also an allele that controls whether or not that color can be deposited on the hair so as you can see there those individuals that have um, recessive alleles two recessive alleles for coat deposition will automatically have white hair because that's not letting the other genes express themselves. It's not letting um, the gene for black hair or for brown hair um, be expressed. Pleiotropy is where a gene can have several phenotypic effects. So, for example, sickle cell anemia, unfortunately, it leads to many effects. Polygenic inheritance is where two or more um, genes affect a single phenotype, so that's the opposite of pleiotropy. This um, is just a simplified example showing uh, skin color. Skin color is affected by many things, um, not just one gene. The environment affects um, the expression of genes. It's pretty cool, but hydrangeas change color based on the pH of the soil. So as you can see in this picture, um, more acidic soil makes the hydrangeas more blue and um, more alkaline makes them more pink. So basically, um, phenotype is a combination of the environment and the genetic component. It's not just one. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you would like to see more videos.